What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and I'm joined with the Marsman crew to talk about Starfield, which is the most talked about game right now from all across the fandom, whether it's the fans that hate the game or the fans that adore the game, the fans that are in between. And I think it is a good discussion to have when we want to give our official review of the title while providing the good, the bad, as well as our ratings and whether or not you should be playing this game now, later, or not at all. So I'm joined with the Mars Recruit. Let's get started right into the good. And when I think of Starfield, I mean, this is one of the most hyped games that we've heard for many, many years. I mean, this was Microsoft's child, right? They, they had basically put all their chips in the basket for this. I've heard, I've seen people put you know, articles saying that this is the biggest game since Halo 5. Some people even put saying this is the biggest Microsoft game since Halo 1. Uh, they're going all over the place with this, uh, you know, which games we're talking about here. And uh, obviously, this brings a lot of traction. And with its official release, obviously, if you got to pay, uh, you know, the $30 extra, if you were a Game Pass uh, owner, uh, you can play it for early release, or you can pay the $100 premium version to get access to it early. And then when it officially dropped on September 6th, everyone was jumping into it. Uh, it basically broke the highest number on Steam charts for all of the Bethesda game titles on the Steam charts. Right, not necessarily the purchases because that was kind of the the metric that a lot of people have been talking about like that they've hit their six million players right and i think that was kind of the th thing that a lot of people have been debating but if i'm talking about the good i mean i think right away there is so much to do in this game i, I think when you think of an open world uh, open world title a lot of people always ask you know is, is this a time consumer and this is a time consumer this is one of those open world games that you need to really invest in i feel like you need to actually Take your time, play the game, enjoy it. And the fact that there's like one of those concepts where you can just kind of do whatever you want. I feel like that's what makes Starfield the best aspect of it is that you can pick your route, pick your way. I think even the fact that at the beginning you can create your own character and you can pick, you know, for example, I, I mean, I, I went pretty straightforward. Mars Gamer is my character's name. And he was essentially a uh, was raised in the city streets and he was a Ronin. He was a mercenary that was hired, a hired gun, basically, to go and do jobs. So my guy is is ultimately just in a, a G in close combat. And the fact that people actually pay money to hunt after me on a daily basis. And on top of that, I'm raised in the streets, so I get ulterior, alternative, different, you know, voice lines because I am a street kid. Gives me a new way of experiencing the game compared to others. And the fact that each one of us can have a different backstory and have experiences that nobody else has had is what makes the game probably the most enjoyable when it comes to that aspect. It's there's so much to do, and I feel like there's so many different routes you can go with it. So, I mean, I have a lot of other things, but I want to let you guys give your piece. So let's go to hockey here. What, what do you think is one of the biggest goods that you saw with this game? Yeah, I have a few points I'd like to hit here. Uh, I think the music, in general, very good, especially in battle. So before and during, the music kind of hypes you up to, you know, want to run and gun. And that brings me to the gunplay, which for a Bethesda game, the gun and the gameplay I thought was fairly smooth um, on launch. Uh, if you know Bethesda, they really don't put out a lot of polished games on day one. They have a lot of patches, a lot of glitches. Uh, you saw Redfall, obviously. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, the last thing I'm going to say, and listen, I had a hot steamy take on Halo 3 being um, a top three Halo ever, but I'm going to go ahead and turn the Halo Infinite. So this one, um, I'm going to say, dude, Starfield could be one of the best exploration games you know, we can see in the, in, in the future and in the last 10 uh, years. So, um, I mean, I, I'm having a lot of fun playing it and I uh, can't wait to keep going. Yeah, and Lajolica, what's a good that you said here, man? Yeah, some of you guys made really strong points, so I'm not going to repeat it. But to me, I think the ship building is something that um, is elite in this game. Uh, I've seen a lot of creativity. It gives you the tools to make all kinds of ships. We've seen pelicans from Halo in Starfield. We have seen, you know, ships from Star Wars and Star Trek and, and everything in between. I've even seen just recently someone make an actual gun that is a ship that, that flies through the air. So, like, it kind of reminded me of earlier in the year with Tears of the Kingdom when we saw all these different, like, battle drones that people were making. The creativity that it gives you for some of this, especially in this sci-fi environment, I think, again, there's a lot of big things. When you look for a sci-fi adventure, ships, right, exploring, um, you know, like, kind of, you know, 
discovering aliens, fighting aliens, you know, all those the different aspects in the ship part was a huge plus. And I know there were people who weren't big fans of the ship fighting. I actually enjoyed the ship fighting. Um, you know, it's a little clunky, but sometimes, you know, I, I thought it worked pretty well and it, it was an enjoyable experience. You could also customize the different uh, weapons and stuff. So ship building to me, a huge plus in this game, probably in my opinion, it's best aspect outside of the quest. I mean, think about how many how many space games you've had and how many of them allowed you to customize your ship to this degree where you can really create the shape of it. But I think the, the strategy of organizing that, the power levels towards your energies and weaponry, like that gives your ship so much more leeway in how you want to be like going forward. But I'll add one more thing for me. The, the side quests, I think, have been so fun. I, I you know, it's really difficult sometimes to have an open world game where the side quests actually outweigh your main quests, where you feel more inclined to play the side missions than actually continue the main story. And we can talk about that as being a negative uh, in, a, in a way. But I feel like sometimes when I'm playing the game and I'm playing through the main missions, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that they are bad, but I'd be doing a main mission on like Neon and all of a sudden I walk I walk past somebody and they're like, hey, yo, uh, can, you, can we talk for a minute? And all of a sudden I talk to them and then it leads me down an entirely new path of interesting side mission. Like uh, I'm on Neon and all of a sudden I'm, I'm about to get into a gang war with the other opposing gang that's controlling the city. And then I'm talking to another guy who has a, a dispute with other merchants that is basically paying the, the police to allow his goods to be transferred first. Like I'm, th I'm talking about all these different side quests in one particular area and there's so many more of them. And they're all kind of like, some of them are, are shorter, some of them are longer. It's just like, and the funniest thing about Bethesda games is they have this sort of quirkiness about them that is just like, if, if you don't get it, they're not, you're not really into Bethesda's titles, you're gonna think it's like, oh, this is just too cheesy. Like I literally was doing a mission where I had to basically pick and choose which which ship we should be making for our company like i had i had to be like the investor like i had to be the shark that had to tell people which ship we're going to be investing going forward and then i had to go uh, <laughs> and another mission i'm going off to, to tell humans that travel two two hundred uh, thousand miles to travel to a planet that hey you got to move somewhere else this is no longer your destination like I, i'm doing these wacky missions as basically my own individual space captain and it's just like it takes you all across all this universe and there's so much to do like i i feel like you get lost in the sauce of all these side quests that you start to forget like wait what was the main mission i was trying to do again and i and i think to me personally it's just like it's just fun i just feel like it's just so enjoyable to to get lost and just play a bunch of side missions that are just really fun but uh hockey what's another good that you felt if you if you have another one what's another thing that you felt was really good about this Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think uh, Bethesda always kind of how you had uh, just mentioned it, kind of quirky and kind of um, funny, but they also like hide stuff, secrets and, and Easter eggs and stuff like that. Um, for example, I was able to just at level three, I was able to get a master locked uh, spacesuit by just looking through a crack, um, you know, in, in this glass case. So there's so many fun things. There's also a secret uh, hidden chest. There's two hidden chests on, on, on a planet that you can just walk onto and press X or press A, whatever it is to open it up, but you can't see them, they're completely invisible. So they do so many funny things um, that it's just a very fun uh, and enjoyable game to play. Yeah, and, and Legit Killer, do you have anything else you want to add for the, the first this first section? Yeah, I mean, the gunplay was always a big question mark coming into this game. Um, and when we first saw trailers of it, it was a concern, right? It looked kind of like Fallout, um, but this definitely, I don't think it's as smooth as Cyberpunk, but I think this is a, definitely an improvement and probably one of the best Bethesda gunplay um, that we've experienced. So definitely a step forward from Fallout 4 and 76 um, and a much closer to a Cyberpunk type of uh, gunplay. And I'll reiterate what you guys said about the side quest. Uh, the main quest to me is it's not bad, it's not great, but the side quest is what really, the faction quest, the side activities, and again, it goes back to what you guys said on like choosing your own path. Like for me, I wanted to be a bounty hunter and a smuggler. So you can go into these mission hubs and I picked up bounties and I picked up, you know, going after certain people and going after, you know, and smuggling different items. And like, that was kind of the way I wanted to play. Right. So I just forgot about all the exploring ones, forgot about the resource gathering ones and focused in on that. And that like you go to a certain area you do a main mission and then you do those side missions around it and it just consumes the time for you. And that's probably to me, the highest point of Starfield is that. 
Yeah, and, and with the good, we do need to talk about the bad. And and Hockey kind of mentioned before, me, me personally, I didn't see, necessarily see a lot of bad for Starfield, but there are definitely some things you can criticize them for. And, and you have to be real. I mean, I, I know, understand that there's a lot of excitement behind Starfield and a lot of love behind what they were able to accomplish with the, uh, their decade-long development of this game. But there's also things that you're like, you kind of look at them and say, you could have done this so much better. And that's, that's in my opinion, the exploration areas. I feel like you had, there's so many planets that you can investigate. And there are a lot of like, basically each planet you go to has roughly two points of interest that you can find. And then essentially they, unless there's a mission there, then you can just move on and go find another place. And, and the problem I felt was that you had this, this loss of a opportunity to make this even better. And the, the kind of the trademark that I feel like is always kind of a good thing to say to a lot of developers is sometimes better to lessen the scale of the size of the title to focus on the details. And as much as Starfield gives you like the thousand planets you can go investigate, I'm not, and I don't think they're lying about the thousand planets, but it just tells me that if you, let's just say you made it a hundred planets, then maybe you can make those a hundred planets as detailed as possible. And all of a sudden now you, you shut up every person that makes a, claim that this is a barren wasteland like you can make it where you can you can create those 100 planets and yeah whatever if, if someone happens upon a similar like planet again but you make that place unique like you make it enough unique that it's like as stuff to investigate like that's still better than what 99 percent of open world games are doing like that's you know what i mean like i get it i get it that you want to make this the biggest exploration game possible and it feels like that with a star map but it's just you, you could have definitely lessened the amount and fine tuned the details to make it even better. And I feel like it was just a missed opportunity. But Angelica, what was something that you felt was a bad here? Yeah, to me, that is the biggest uh, issue I have with Starfield is exploration. I think exploration is not good. Um, and this is different, not exploration in cities. I think the cities exploring is a lot of fun. And that's where you pick up these side quests. But when you're going planet to planet, there is a majority of time you land in, in those points of interest. You may find one outpost where you find villains. You may find a cave, but a lot of times it's just, you know, hey, scan this area, look at these different rocks, and it is a barren wasteland. And when you're just running and you're just jetpacking, it feels slow. It feels slow and drags on for a while. And, and again, they grab different tiles. They talked about it, and I don't want to get into too details on how the kind of planets are formed, but there's different tiles that are, again, they have like an algorithm that puts certain tiles together, and that's how the planet is formed. And other people might experience more, you know, quality planets going on compared to a different person, right? So some of that uh, procedural uh, development and like Mara said, maybe if you scale back and put a little bit more handcrafting into the planets, I think it would dull that kind of experience that it feels like Minecraft at times. You land on a planet and it's generating, and sometimes it's just generating a wasteland of nothing there. Um, so it's going to be very mixed exploring-wise. Um, I do think compared to questing, it, it doesn't come close. And that's the unfortunate part. If you're really going into Starfield to say, hey, I want to explore the universe, um, it dulls that. Uh, in my opinion, I don't think it's as enjoyable as as we hoped it would be. Uh, and Hockey, what do you feel like was a negative here? Yeah, so for me, it's kind of a personal vendetta. Uh, it, it's going to fall into the category of games. So Elden Ring, Far Cry, Tears of the Kingdom, Starfield. Uh, this is a game that I cannot play for one hour. If I have an hour to play, I cannot pick up this game because 30 minutes into the game, I will be doing something else light years away from what I wanted to do. So this game, I can only play when I have two to three hours to focus. And I don't care if I have two and three hours and I go and do something else for an hour, that's fine. But if I only have an hour to play, I'm throwing on Halo, Call of Duty. That's the one bad for me, but that's a personal thing for me. No, that's, that's understandable. I've been when, when I had access to Starfield on the early access, I was playing this a lot. And then when life hits you and you get hit with a lot of other things going on, it's like, damn, I, I want to play more Starfield, but I can't because I literally don't have the time to, to plug in hours, right? And I think that is one of the things, but it's like, and I agree with you, Hockey. It's, it's like, it's uh, unfortunately, it feels like a lot of games recently have just been, you need oh, hours to beat yeah. this thing. It's an open world <laughs> fest, and it's just, it's, as much as they, they have been great, 2023 has been good eats for everybody here. Um, but it's just been like, damn, can we like ease up on the 
open world and let's focus on maybe like the the, yeah. the linear 20, stuff or you know, hours, things like that yeah that's the an average of 29 hours to complete the main mission and it's about a hundred over about completionists yeah 100 a hundred hours they complete a hundred it's like it, i can't even imagine completing a hundred yeah <laughs> i have 400 hours of you know, yeah i had 800 hours in elden ring <laughs> One other Jesus. thing, guys, and I don't know, did I, Kaki mentioned a personal thing that he hates, and this is another personal thing I hate. Not having maps in the main cities is annoying. Yeah. Stupid. And yeah. even Bethesda yeah. has acknowledged that they're looking to put into it in the next update yeah. to put maps in the Let's, city. Let us hope that they and do that. I, it should have never been there. I understand on, you know, new planets where you need to, and if you had a system where it was like Elden Ring where you, you scan enough of it and it and then it shows up on your on your screen as a map. I under completely understand new planets, but cities it makes zero sense in the future that you can't get a map of a city. It doesn't make sense to me. I, yeah, I don't understand it either, especially when you're trying to like go find a merchant and you're like, oh, hey, I just want to sell stuff, man. I, I just want to sell my yeah. stuff, and you can't even find them. You got to go search everywhere. I actually had to YouTube a merchant <laughs> to find a merchant. <laughs> That's I was very upset. Um, but all right, so. With all that being said, let's jump to our final verdicts. And when I look at Starfield, I mean, it's one of those situations where, you know, I'm going to write a whole, I'm making a whole opinion piece about Starfield, the two sides of Starfield, where a lot of the, there's like, the console wars are what really bring Starfield into the mix, right? And I feel like that, that a lot of people, whether it's upcoming Spider-Man game or Starfield, because of the fact that you have your battle lines have been drawn, it's like it turns into this whole this is garbage for these x reasons and then this is amazing for these x reasons and it turns a lot of people off from playing the game when if you just play the game and just enjoy it you're gonna find starfield to be a very enjoyable game if you, if you have ever played a fallout game before this is literally start a, a space version of a fallout but i feel like it has more of a connection to like mass effect than than i think a like new vegas like i feel like I, in my opinion, I feel more connected to Starfield than I did with Fallout 4. I mean, maybe it was because it has the sci-fi feel to it, but I also think it's because there's just so much to do compared to, like, I think Fallout 4 did. And I I felt like this was a very fun game to play. I'm thinking I'm giving this game an 8.9 out of 10. I feel like it has a lot of good things tied to it. I don't think it deserves to get close to an 8. I think it's definitely better than, like, an, a level 8 game. I know a lot of people have been saying... You know it's a seven or an eight low or low eight game I, I don't necessarily agree with that i think that the main story missions yes they may not be as good as the side missions but they're pretty standard for a sci-fi game i feel like it's a standard sci-fi story of exploration and and finding powers and all that stuff like that and that is pretty standard right but what makes the game more way more fun is the side missions going through each character's side mission and going through their story and then going through the factions and, and seeing their entire story play through and then all the goofy stuff that happens in between like i feel like this game just is fun it's one of those it just reminds you of a fun game that you play like i it, i'm not saying to the same levels like the witcher but like the witcher was just one of those games that i just had fun playing like it was like yeah it's a long game it's a game of the year but it's just a fun game and i feel like a lot of people are like oh my god loading screens like i imagine imagine the day of loading screens are still a thing like loading screens are still in games guys like it's not like it's a it's outrageous to say that it's just kind of like we starting to, to get dive deep into the dumbness of this console war stuff where people start to just pick out little details to make it a big deal whether it's it's the game of a generation or it's the worst thing i've ever played in my entire life it's like that in between i think this is an 8.9 for me it's a fun game to play i need a lot of fun playing it. i'm still being fun to be playing it um but yeah that's that's what i think but uh, Angelica, what do you think? What's your final rating here? Yeah, I mean, taking out all the console war BS, um, putting that to the side, um, I think we've seen a lot of weird verbiage going on back and forth, whether it's like, you know, you, how do you grade this game if you only played like 20 plus hours, right? You have to play 50 plus hours. That's how, you, that's how we can take you seriously. And then the other side where it's like, you know what? They have a, you know, 20 second loading screen. What a disaster. Um, and, you know, it, it's just such strange behavior from pretty much both sides of the aisle. Um, I can understand if you're not a Bethesda fan, 
that this game might feel weird to you. Like it might feel a little weird. If you're looking for something that's gonna just grab your attention right away, the game starts off slow. But I think even what the Bethesda developers said, the more time you put in, the better experience you have. And I think that's absolutely true. The more time you put in, the farther you get further into these quests, into side quests, into the factions, that's where Starfield really shines to me. Um, and the scope of the game you have to acknowledge as being one of the larger games that we have seen. And, and they give you enough to do to, to develop your own path. At times, I felt like this was an elite game, not just a good game, but an elite game. And then at times, I felt like at moments, it got boring. So to me, I'm going to go in between. I'm at an 88. I think this is a very strong game. I don't think it's an elite game, but a very, very good one. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know if we're going to give our buy now, buy later or not at all. But uh I'm not, do you want I mean, to do that now too, or? I mean, we. I mean, I'm a buy me, now. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna agree. Now, I'm, it's a not. buy. This is a buy now. I mean, I. Yeah. I for game it, pass or if even game if you pass, don't have, it's like this is a shoe in. You but you yeah, play this game, game right now. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have game pass, you really need to have the time to put in. This is not mm -hmm. like hockey said. If you got like an hour or two to spend, that's not what this game is for. You need to really put hours in yeah, to get yeah, yeah. that get that that, that feedback back um, from them. So I'm at a buy now. Um, I enjoy these large open world games, so for me, it's a buy now. Yeah, and uh, hockey, what's your rating? And do you want to buy? You already said buy now. So what do you? What's your rating here, man? Yeah, I'm buying now. I'm right with you guys. I'm pretty much. I got 88 written down. Uh, I have it at an 88. Uh, listen, the, I talk about the core of games all the time. The core of Halo Infinite being good. The core, the backbone of this game is there. It's good, it's strong. Um, I talked about it being that hot steamy take, it being that exploration, that that uh, you know pinnacle of exploration game. I think it could be. I see what um, you said about the cities. I see what the cities uh, offer. And I think that with uh, expansions, it could be um, an amazing game, an amazing exploration game. And that's what I'm hoping for. When I made that hot take about Halo Infinite, I was hoping to God that it was going to be a top three Halo for me. And it's turned out to be something good. So I'm hoping my hot take here with Starfield, you know, give me a, an exploration game that I can love. You know what's the, what the good thing about games like this is that the mod support is actually already confirmed for both PC and console, which is yeah. a great I see the thing. Console. I want to yeah. see how they execute the console because that's always yeah. the hard to, to the point where I'm hearing people Modern making stuff. mods for like co-op on Starfield. Like, if you make co-op Starfield, this will oh, this will be elevated I, points really wise good. for me. Like that 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 is one of the things I on felt console. like would have made this game. Yeah, that is what I'm saying for console. Oh, if they yeah. make the if they make mods for multiplayer Starfield and yeah, they that's... implement it in the con console, that that this elevates the game even higher because that was one of the reasons why I felt like it could have they missed an opportunity because. You make like you had your own little like troop of of space cadets or space soldiers. Oh, yeah. I mean, like space. this is like how what game does that? What game can actually pull that off as well as this? If if you yeah, can do a, that in a sci-fi, none, right? So yeah. we saw in an Elden Ring. We've seen like you know where you can summon friends and do that, which I was to me such a great experience. Oh, so yeah. like for if we can summon in you know a sci-fi environment, which we all like sci-fi, it's crazy. crazy. It's cool. What do you guys think about Starfield? Are you are, do you think it's a game of the generation? Do you think it's just a good game? Do you think it's a bad game? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>